different if he has this thing versus this thing? The answer is no, so why not? Yeah. I mean, it is a different function, right? This is like the square root of the original one. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So we care, we care about the ordering. And the, the key feature of these different transformations I've shown you is that in this commodity space, they're all increasing. Oops, there we go. And so we knew in the original utility function that the consumer would prefer 4 to 2, for example, because 4 gives a higher level of utility than 2 does. And that same property is preserved in all these transformations. The utility at 4 is always higher than the utility at 2, even when we take the square root. Higher than this. Yeah, okay. So the ordering over all the possible bundles is the same for all of these different uses. Okay. So these are all examples of monotonic transformations of utility. A definition of a monotonic transformation of utility function, even in higher dimensions, is, or uh, I should say a property of it, is that it doesn't change the preference ordering over the bundles. Okay, so that, that's, that's the definition of a monotonic transformation. Okay, so there are non-monotonic non transformations too. Um, oh, hold on, so I got it, sorry, this is another one. This is also a monotonic transformation. This is a little more extreme in a way than, uh, than these earlier ones, uh, but still the case here, so I'm raising this thing to the third. So I wind up with a utility function, which is now convex or concave up instead of concave down. It's still the case though that four is preferred to two. So this is another monotonic transformation, yeah. No, it works in more general spaces too, it's just harder for me to draw the, draw the figure, although I'll have an example for you later on before I try for two. Commodity space of two at least. Um, yeah, okay. So these are monotonic transformations. Um, so scratch your head for a moment and think, well, gee, is it possible to have a non-monotonic transformation that would change preference orders? Can you give me an example? <laughs> I'm perfectly capable of asking rhetorical questions. Uh, <laughs> right. Am I not capable of asking rhetorical questions? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so, so somebody give me an example of a non-monotonic transformation. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, well, negative, what do you mean by negative constant? Okay, so I could subtract, if I could take the same utility function, instead of adding one, I could subtract one. That wouldn't change the ordering. That's, uh, um, that's exactly right. Um, uh, well, so, so there are examples where it will change the ordering. One of them is where we change the slope of the thing. So let me go ahead and say these properties. I'm doing this out of order, sorry. Okay, so these are all, all the examples I've given so far are monotonic transformations. So they change the rate at which utility increases. Um, they're not going to change the direction. They always prefer more to less. Um, if we had, if they don't change the indifference map either. And if we had a more complicated uh, commodity space, it still wouldn't change the, the, uh, the uh, indifference map. And um, so the indifference map we get for any of these utility functions are the same. They have exactly the same indifference maps. So all these have the same indifference maps, even though the indifference maps are trivial in this case. Um, Okay, and here's the final thing. This is related to our earlier discussion about interpersonal utility comparisons. If one person has a utility function that looks like this, and another person has a utility function like that looks like this, they still have the same difference map. And uh, they're going to have the same difference curves, they're going to have the same marginal rates of substitution. There's going to be no way, we'll come back to this, there's going to be no way to determine from their demand, their demand behavior, the stuff they, they respond to, react to the prices, and the way they behave, there's going to be no way to know whether they've got this utility function or this utility function. Okay. All right, so let me, let me go ahead and go back to these counter examples. I'm in the wrong way. Let me come back to these counter examples of non monotonic transformation. So Eric's already mentioned uh, one example of a non monotonic transformation that would screw this up. So one is to multiply it by minus one. Now I added a constant here to make it impossible to work on. So I've got five minus u of x. Okay, this implies a complete reversal of preferences. Now the consumer prefers less to more. Okay, so, uh, so this, this, this definitely screws up the, uh, screws up the indifference map and hence is a non-monotonic transformation. Okay, here's another one, which is a little less trivial. Um, this one involves, uh, well, a little more complicated transformation. I'm going to add one and I'm going to subtract one from u of x, raise that to the fourth power and subtract the whole thing from the original. So that's going to give me something that starts off going up the way we like utility functions to do. Uh, it reaches a maximum um, at, uh, at one, I guess. And uh, then it is declining. Okay, so this also screws up the indifference map. What's the, um, what's the point here that the uh, consumer would most prefer? Well, so this is the utility function. So it's, where, it's where the utility function reaches a maximum. And uh, you can see from this that that's going to happen where u of x is equal to 1. Um, so uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's in here. Oh, it's actually it's not 1 because we've got law. It's 1 plus, um, it'll be uh, e minus 1, I guess. Uh, okay. anyway, anyway, where it reaches a maximum is the preferred indifference curve. And so higher indifference curves don't correspond to higher levels of utility. So we screwed up non-satiation with this transformation. Okay. Um, all right, so those, those are my examples. Um, for any monotonic transformation, however, uh, it's not only the case that we don't change orderings, I said this already, the marginal rates of substitution aren't going to be affected. You've got the same difference maps for a mon monotonic transformation of utility function, even in more complicated commodity spaces. Um, and as a consequence, monotonic transformations don't change the indifference curves of the marginal rates of substitution. Okay, and do I have time to do this? Um, so here's an example. Uh, this is the same utility function we worked with before, except that I multiplied it by 2. So I, we already worked out the marginal rates of substitution where for alpha log x1 plus beta log x2. Maybe I'll do that again um, for this case. So do you remember what the marginal rate of substitution was for this case? Uh, without the 2? Whoops. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, Okay, well, I, I, I give up. Okay, so the, uh, that's right. So the, uh, for the case where we have u of x1, x2 equal to alpha log x1 plus beta log x2, we have a uh, marginal rate of substitution, which was just equal to alpha over beta x2 over x1. Okay, so that was our, our earlier result. Um, now let's go ahead and consider uh, a, marginal, uh, a monotonic transformation of this, where we have, let's call it u tilde, x1, x2 equal to 2 alpha log x1 plus 2 beta log x2. Okay, so the marginal rate of substitution here is going to be equal to the marginal utility of good 1 divided by the marginal utility of good 2. This is another sort of economic notation I'll sometimes use. What's the marginal utility of good 1 here? It's the partial derivative with respect to x1. I'm sorry, what was it? Yeah, so it's uh, the marginal utility of good 1 is, uh, as you say, uh, 2 times alpha divided by x1. Okay, what about the marginal utility of good 2? Something pretty similar looking. Um, and then, lo and behold, are, well, I'll rewrite this. So we have now 2 alpha, 2 beta, uh, all times x2 over x1. But of course, 2's cancel. So we're left with exactly the same 
exactly the same thing. Okay, so this is a very simple, extremely simple monotonic transformation. And you might think, well, gee, if you did something crazy involving exponents and factorials and a bunch of other uh, funky stuff like that, surely you wouldn't wind up with the same marginal rates of substitution, um, but you'd be mistaken. As long as, you as long as it's a monotonic transformation, so it always never changes the direction of the utility curve, that's sort of the idea, you'll wind up with uh, exactly the same marginal rates of substitution. Okay. All right, questions? Okay, so let me, let me observe one more thing. Um, if one person has a utility function that looks like this, and another half person has a monotonic transformation of that same utility function, so it looks like this. We can say that they have different utility functions. And in a cardinal sense, that's right. This person has twice the utility that this person does for any, for any given bundle x1, x2. But regarding this ordinal utility functions, these two things are equivalent. They imply exactly the same orderings over the bundle, all the bundles x1 and x2, whether it's this thing or this thing. And so if we have our ordinalist hat on, and we're thinking about ordinal utility functions, we say there's no, no important difference between these. They, they imply exactly the same preference ordering as we consume it. Um, with our cardinal hat on, we might say, well, gee, this person uh, derives more benefit from consuming x1 and x2, and maybe happier as a consequence. But there's no way we can sort of know that just by looking at the demand behavior. We might be able to get at it through some of the methods we talked about um, last week, I think. We might, if we did a survey and said, gee, how happy are you? Perhaps this person would be more likely to say, yeah, I'm, ha I'm happier. It's not clear. Uh, maybe this person has, uh, has different brain activity. I don't know. Uh, maybe this person is less likely to commit suicide. Maybe they smile more. Uh, all those things are possible. But in terms of their ordering over different consumption goods, um, they're, they're indistinguishable. All right. Questions about um, monotonic transformations or ordinal utility? Okay, let me, let me close um, with a little bit of. Um, this is not homework, but if you want to think more about this, here are some examples you might consider. And I'll put these lectures on the, uh, these lectures will be on B space, so you can look at these later. But one thing you might do as an exercise, not a problem set, not graded, but something you might consider doing it as an exercise, is going through and thinking about computing the uh, marginal rates of substitution for different example uh, utility functions. And here are some simple examples um, that, I, that I've come up with um, that, that may be instructive. Okay, yes. Oh, are these questions? Um, no, but, I'll, but if you want to discuss them with me, I'd be happy to. Okay. All right, very good. That's all for today. Thanks.